Welcome to the Terran Space Academy. Now that we have established the fundamentals of rocket and space science, let's learn something new. It's 2028, and the Terran Academy of Science has decided to start developing a deep space outpost to facilitate humanity's expansion into the solar system. The space science will be handled by the Terran Space Academy, which plans to have campuses throughout the solar system and you will be consulting on a plan to carry out the primary mission of this endeavor. The Terran Space Academy will now start educating you on what you need to know to start establishing an off-world camp, build an outpost, and develop a colony. Remember that all tuition at the Terran Space Academy is voluntary. Please go to patreon.com slash Terran Space Academy and donate what you can. Everything is appreciated and we are grateful for your support. Merchandise is also available with the Terran Space Academy logo. You should be able to find it on eBay. If you have any difficulties, send us a message and we will help you out. When I talk about deep space, I'm talking about anything past the orbit of the moon. Someday deep space will mean anything past the orbit of Mars, as the infrastructure on the moon and Mars will become so developed as to make travel to these destinations commonplace. The space science specialists have chosen the destination of our first off-world outpost and research campus to be here, Deimos. Deimos is the smallest moon of Mars. The larger moon is called Phobos and orbits very close to Mars. It is also much bigger than Deimos. But for our purposes, you will see that smaller is better right now. And a more distant orbit from Mars creates a smaller orbital velocity, making it easier for ships to dock and depart. The gravity on Deimos is in fact so weak that we can easily control spaceships with reaction control system thrusters or ion thrusters. And we are far enough from Mars that its gravity at this distance is considerably weaker also. Both of these moons will have an interesting issue from the solar wind that I will demonstrate here. This is the moon Phobos. As it orbits Mars, the solar wind creates a cloud of electrons that can accumulate on the night side surface and in the shadowed craters, creating a possible static electricity hazard. This also creates a possible power source. We will get into this later, but be aware of the risk. In 2016, Lockheed Martin had proposed placing its Orion spacecraft in orbit around Mars by 2028. This was called Mars Base Camp, but they did not plan to build a base anywhere. They planned to orbit a ship around Mars, with exploratory excursions to Phobos and Deimos and they were going to use this ship, which you will remember from the last lecture. It would have been a little cramped for an eight-month each-way mission with about four months in Mars orbit, and we feel the Orion is too small for our purposes. The Academy has decided that a starship in the lunar starship configuration will be leased for this project. Only a starship has the capacity to carry the supplies we will need for a crew of 12 to build an outpost and get it self-sufficient enough to only need occasional resupply from Earth. We do not plan to look around and go home. We plan to stay until we have a viable outpost. For this purpose, we choose to locate our outpost on Deimos. At just 13 kilometers across, Deimos is almost certainly an asteroid captured by the gravity of Mars. Deimos has a surface area of 495 square kilometers. That happens to be the exact same size as this city on Earth, Yekaterinburg, which supports a population of about 1.5 million people. This is a large, beautiful industrial city in northern Russia. Deimos appears to be a type C asteroid. Let's review what this means. Asteroids are solid mass objects that mostly formed with the early solar system. They are too small to be planets but can sometimes get large enough to be dwarf planets like Ceres and Vesta. When they get this big, their gravity is strong enough to create a spherical shape, but they are not big enough to clear their orbit of other bodies. Asteroids form when small pieces of matter, created in the death of a star we call a supernova, started to stick together and, over time, formed larger and larger rocks. These conglomerated rocks become large enough for their gravity to exert a powerful crushing force at the center. This can start to fuse the pieces together into a type of stone we call chondrite. If the asteroid keeps getting bigger, we can eventually end up with something really big, like these moons throughout our solar system. As these large bodies develop, the gravity at the center gets strong enough to crush and heat the stones melting them, 
and create a molten core. Once the core is liquid, lighter elements will float to the outside while heavier ones sink to the center. This means that elements with the highest density, like uranium and osmium, will be at the very center. The decay of radioactive elements will contribute to the heat at the core and can keep it molten for a very long time. Size makes a difference too. Heat is radiated from the surface of an object. Volume increases by the radius cubed while surface area by the radius squared. A smaller object cools more quickly than a larger one, all else being equal, because the surface area to volume ratio is larger. The core of Mars cooled a long time ago, while Earth's core is still molten. We usually call something an asteroid when it has an irregular shape, hasn't gotten big enough to become spherical, and is floating independently throughout the solar system, sometimes in the asteroid belt. The platinum group metals like platinum, gold, and palladium will mostly be in the core also, then less dense elements. Finally, you get iron and nickel with other elements in a melted slurry and later a solid shell. Now, a mixture of more than two metals is called an alloy, and an alloy of iron and nickel is called steel. Finally, if there is some water combined, you get chemical reactions producing lighter minerals like silicates and carbonates, and even some complex organic molecules. This can happen on bodies too small to develop enough heat at their core to become molten. Sometimes some of these larger bodies collide. The moon of the Earth appears to have been reformed from the debris of a Mars-sized planet we call Thea, impacting with an early Earth. Other times these collisions cause a large debris field to orbit a star independently, such as our asteroid belt. How can we be sure that these collisions have happened? This guy is a rather good hint. 16 Psyche. We have discussed Psyche in other courses as it has some unique qualities. Review this course to get a good picture of its value. But what is Psyche? Psyche is the core of a destroyed planet that at one time may have been almost as big as Mars. The largest debris field of dead planets is called an asteroid belt. This belt orbits the Sun between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Frequent collisions and the massive gravity of Jupiter did not let a large planet form here. How do we know? Psyche is a metallic asteroid, but more than that, it is a solid 226 kilometers across. That means it dwarfs the moons of Mars, Phobos, and Deimos. Let's look at how big it is compared. Here you can see some of the largest asteroids in the belt. And here you see the size of Phobos and Deimos relative to our moon. Now why do we choose Deimos for the location of our first attempt at a deep space outpost? The very first off-world colony site, capable of eventually housing a population in the billions, will be the moon of Earth. The second will be Mars. While a colony on the moon will be relatively easy to develop with only a few days transit time and little communication delay, allowing remote controlled equipment, Mars is a totally different situation. By establishing an outpost on Deimos, before we start building the Mars colony, we will have a refueling and evacuation point for the founders of our colony on Mars. Getting on and off Mars and to and from the Earth is quite difficult. Traveling between the Earth's moon and Deimos will be much simpler. We can also perform an intensive study of the most useful asteroid in existence. Not the most valuable. That will almost certainly be Psyche. Now how will we accomplish our goal of setting up a camp so we can start building our outpost? What is the difference between a camp, an outpost, and a colony? A camp is a semi-permanent structure where you will send personnel to live off of supplies brought with them. If they run out of supplies, they will have to go home. The crew of this mission will be carefully selected professionals with a high tolerance to radiation. By that I mean they will be age 45 or older. It is not safe to send anyone younger to a high radiation area. If you want to read more about human radiation tolerance and expected exposure during the colonization of the Moon and Mars, you can order my book on Amazon. We will want to have landed our starship on Deimos horizontally. We will have paid the extra fee to have the interior organized in a horizontal manner. We will process the residual methane and oxygen in the tanks through molten carbonate fuel cells to help us stay warm and produce electricity. We will supplement this with solar. One of our first jobs will be to release a small drone vehicle that will fly all the way around Deimos deploying a cable. We might consider Kevlar as a good material for this cable, but it turns out that the best material would be hemp. Hemp that has been soaked in lime juice becomes an extremely strong and ultraviolet resistant material. Kevlar is very susceptible to ultraviolet light. 
We choose hemp over Kevlar also because we will be growing hemp in our greenhouses and we will be growing limes. Limes will be necessary to provide vitamin C and are a very tasty addition to the diet. Hemp is an extremely strong and versatile fabric that produces edible seeds, healthy oils, which can also be used for machine lubricants, and does not have THC. So we won't have to hide it when everyone gets bored. If hemp fabric is coated in a resin, it can make an incredibly strong composite structure suitable for almost any application. Henry Ford, in fact, produced a hemp Model T that could be hit with sledgehammers without denting. It has even been used to make bulletproof vests. Now this drone will fly all the way around Deimos and come back to the Starship. We will then tighten that cable, thereby securing our Starship to the surface. If there were to be some kind of explosion, we don't want our whole campsite launching itself into space. And the gravity on Deimos is so weak, this would be easy to do. We will do this twice more with two other cables 60 degrees apart for safety. We can then use these cables to anchor our automated mining machines so they can process regolith from the surface of Deimos and return useful materials to our campsite. Once our camp is established, we will quickly start trying to build an outpost. Remember, a camp is totally dependent upon supplies carried with it, while an outpost is able to somewhat live off the land with occasional resupply, which will mean greenhouses will have to be built. Select food and other crops will be grown to supplement what arrives by resupply mission. We will also start tunneling into the regolith and deploying inflatable habitats. As we tunnel, we continue processing the regolith for volatiles and other useful elements. Chondrite asteroids contain a lot of iron, aluminum, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, and helium, with some oxygen, calcium, sulfur, and even water ice, with more complex molecules like hydrocarbons, carboxylic acids, alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, amines, amides, sulfonic acids, phosphoric acids, and many other useful molecules and compounds if the water was able to react with other elements. Chondrite asteroids can vary quite a bit in the relative abundance of these materials and are often categorized by their major constituents. A C-type chondrite asteroid like Deimos will have a lot of carbon. They are believed to have formed the farthest from the Sun and are thought to have the highest proportion of volatiles, including water, of any type of asteroid. That means that orbiting Mars right now is the absolute best type of asteroid for mining supplies that can be used for Mars to Earth travel and for the founders of an outpost on Mars itself. If you have carbon and hydrogen, you can make methane to refuel the starships. Now, until they get their own mining operations up to speed down on Mars, this will be the best way to ensure survivability. A lot of heavy equipment can be sent directly from Earth, landed autonomously on starships, and controlled from Deimos Station. A large nuclear-powered tunneling machine on Mars that processes the regolith it excavates would be unbelievably valuable. Cap the openings of the tunnel with airlocks and you have a radiation-shielded habitat. All this can be done without endangering any human beings. During this time, instruments will be deployed to study Mars, Phobos, and Deimos itself. Within a short six months, we will have tethered our starship to the surface, set up our shielded inflatable habitats, built our greenhouses, and started growing our crops. And our mining machines will be processing in situ materials for usable resources. When we have reached this point, we now have an outpost. This outpost will be called Deimos Station. Our next episode will go more in depth into what is necessary to turn our outpost into a colony. The difference between an outpost and a colony is that a colony can be completely self-sufficient and you can have children there. To safely have children on any off-world site, you will absolutely have to have three things. Adequate radiation shielding, as children are extremely vulnerable to radiation. Sufficient infrastructure and supplies to survive a catastrophic event until rescue can arrive. And finally, artificial gravity. It is completely irresponsible to consider a colony with children without these three conditions being met. Solving these infrastructure problems and others will be the subject of our next lesson on establishing off-world colonies. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Support us on Patreon if you can. And stay safe at Astro Proterra.